I'm Tyler Mullen, a software engineer at Google. I created and lead MediaPipe's web efforts, and today I'm going to talk to you about our cross-platform approach to bringing AI technology to the browser. So what is MediaPipe? MediaPipe is a cross-platform, open source, stream processing framework used across a wide range of teams, platforms, and products including Meet, YouTube, Photos, and many more. These are just a few of our partners inside Google. So why is it such a popular choice? The answer is sharing. MediaPipe is designed to facilitate sharing code between pipelines, between platforms, and between products. So it's a great choice for a scalable ecosystem. MediaPipe enables efficient building and running of pipelines at scale. That means there's a little extra effort involved to run just one pipeline. But then after that, it's relatively simple to try 10 pipelines, or 100, often without even needing to rebuild. And because it's explicitly cross-platform, the same pipelines can generally be run on desktops, laptops, iOS, Android, web, and potentially even Raspberry Pi devices. The framework is open sourced as well, so you can browse the code for yourself on our public GitHub. So let's talk a little about how it works. Users first wrap arbitrary C++ code into basic reusable unit building blocks that we call calculators. These are like functional jigsaw pieces, which can do anything from flipping an image to running an ML model. At runtime, we then use protobuffer graph files to specify how to connect those different jigsaw pieces into a full end-to-end -end pipeline. It's a similar idea to what our colleagues in Visual Blocks are doing, if you saw their presentation earlier, but it's less visual and a little more C++-ish. The actual application side code to run it should be relatively minimal and high level, and basically determines which graph file to run and then feeds in inputs and receives any outputs. So by changing that graph file, we can combine and reshuffle pieces of existing technology on the fly, like machine learning and audio and video processing, to yield new and exciting applications. MediaPipe offers graph running APIs in Java, C++, Objective-C, Python, TypeScript for web, and more. A lot of code at Google even on device code, is already written in C++. So this is actually a great fit for MediaPipe. However, our web apps and demos are written in TypeScript. So MediaPipe Web is how we bridge that gap. One key component is mscripten, the system we use to transpile all of our C++ code into WebAssembly before wrapping the results into smaller and more focused TypeScript APIs for use in the browser. As an example of this, for those of you joining remotely who are blurring or replacing your background in Meet, that's being done with MediaPipe and was our first major web launch back in 2020. It was made for web using a lot of code initially developed for other platforms, and the core tech remains fully cross-platform. Fast forward to today, and the MeetFX ecosystem has grown tremendously in just a few short years. Significant improvements were made to the ML inference backends, allowing for faster and better model running. New technology was incorporated, like advanced effects rendering and lighting manipulation, and dozens of variations on existing effects were also released. Best of all, all of this tech is shared cross-platform, and all of this can be run right in the user's browser. No server necessary. And this isn't limited to desktop and laptop browsers. Last year, we partnered with several major beauty brands to bring their products to users' mobile browsers in the form of a virtual try-on experience, so people can get a better feeling for how products will look on them before buying anything or traveling to a store in person. So you might be thinking, well, that sounds great for Google, but what about me? Chinese video sharing giant Bilibili used MediaPipe image segmentation and TensorFlow.js in the browser for their signature bullet screen comments feature so that user comments can pass behind the speaker and leave the foreground unobstructed. 
Within a month, they saw a 30% increase in session duration and 19% higher click-through rate for live streaming videos, without any expensive model development or server costs. Which brings us to media pipe tasks, the successors to those APIs that Billy Billy used. These are low-code, publicly available AI solutions to common machine learning problems, designed to support a wider range of models, faster, and with more customization than before. In order to run on GPU on most devices today, they run browser inference using WebGL, similarly to most of these applications that I've previously mentioned. Also, just like the underlying framework, these tasks are cross-platform, so we do offer APIs for Android, iOS, Python, as well as web. Keeping image segmentation as our example, here's what an implementation might look like today. Note that most of the code here is just for specifying configuration options and paths to the WebAssembly and model files. The overall usage pattern is much simpler. First, initialize an image segmenter, and then run the segmentation whenever results are needed. We support a handful of other computer vision tasks as well, like detection and tracking for faces and objects, or pose landmarks for faces, hands, or human skeletons. While our primary focus has traditionally been computer vision, there's nothing really forcing this technology to strictly be for image and video processing, and we do offer a few APIs in other domains, like text and audio processing. Public documentation is available for all of these on the website, but we also have a special web application where you can play around with all of these in one place, called MediaPipe Studio. Additionally, there are some more detailed code pen demos where you can live edit sample code, as well as YouTube tutorials to help cover all of the details. Links for all of these are available at the bottom of this slide. However, in today's world of fast-paced Gen AI breakthroughs, something's conspicuously missing here. Gen AI. And for our first forays into running large language models in the browser, we've been developing an experimental LLM inference API. Like our other media pipe tasks, this one is also cross-platform, although there are some more significant differences between web and non-web here. The web-specific documentation is available at the short link goo.gull slash mediapipe LLM inference web. The web version is web GPU based, unlike most of our previous offerings, and our primary focus so far has been on speed. We wanted to see just how fast we could run LLMs completely on device in the browser. We allow users to provide the model weights, but we only supported four public model architectures initially, Gemma, Phi2, Falcon, and Stable LM, with parameter counts ranging from one to three billion. We recently added support for a fifth architecture, Gemma 2, which can be seen running here in MediaPipe Studio, that uh, public demo site for MediaPipe tasks that I, I briefly mentioned a slide or two ago. This video is not sped up and was recorded live from Chrome on my five-year-old MacBook Pro laptop. Inputs are being processed at roughly 640 tokens per second, and then outputs are being streamed back at a rate of about 40 tokens per second, so it's pretty snappy and make some compelling arguments for pies. Since our initial launch, we've started pushing on boundaries besides just speed. In addition to what's the fastest response can we generate, we wanted to find out what's the best response can we generate. But in the world of LLMs, better quality often comes with bigger sizes. And we found that our unusual system architecture imposed some severe limitations in this respect. So supporting model sizes of, say, 7B and up was non-trivial. Two months ago, we published a blog post on the subject, which is where this diagram was taken from. So if you're curious about how we overcame some of these challenges, you can read more at the link below. And here's what the result looks like. This is a Gemma 1.17B model, which is about 8.6 gigabytes. So it's several times larger than any of those previous models and it's running on a MacBook Pro 2021 laptop. Another key gating factor in quality is customizability. So we implemented multi-output for all of our models, 
and Laura's support for some of them. To that same end, we're working next on features like multimodality and RAG, and really trying to open up our systems to more information, more models, and more users. We actually showcased a demo of how RAG and function calling can expand how we interact with LLMs. That was at last year's Google I.O. in the presentation titled Generative AI on Mobile and Web with Google AI Edge. But I think the primary example of this drive for more adaptability is our new AI Edge Torch system, which we hope will enable users to convert their PyTorch models into a format compatible with our inference engines. The format of the experimental LLM API is nearly identical to what we saw earlier with the image segmenter task. You create an LLM inference engine first, and then when desired, you ask it to generate responses to queries. The one notable difference in this example is that as an optional extra step, we can load LoRa models for custom specializations of the base model, so that when we later query the LLM, we can dynamically swap between these specializations. And speaking of customization, because the code for MediaPipe framework and tasks is open source, you can actually browse around and see how a lot of this has been implemented. One important caveat is that some of the build rules and underlying C++ dependency libraries, especially for a lot of the LLM stuff, have not yet been open sourced. There's a little more work we have to do to make that happen, but we do hope that in the near future, it will be just as easy for anyone to make their own custom task. However, already as of today, all of our TypeScript code is browsable, including the TypeScript bindings layer that we use for most of our media pipe web applications. Those are packaged nicely into what we call the Graph Runner API, which can be checked out at this link. When it comes to sneak previews, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And of course, generative AI doesn't have to be text-based. So with that said, I'm very excited to share one of our latest tech demos. This is a highly optimized image generation model running in Chrome via WebGPU, producing 512 by 512 images in under two seconds. Perhaps most impressively though, this video was also recorded live on my five-year-old MacBook Pro 2019 and has not been sped up at all. <laughs> Thank you. So first it's showing off some uh, fashion accessories for pets, and then some uh, concept art for cute cartoon foxes. And next, we're displaying a variety of space images, uh, just alternating between adding uh, the word sketch and leaving it out to show the difference that a single word or a single token can make. And for this uh, last set to really showcase the variety, uh, we first show the sketch, now it's space by itself, now what it might look like as a photo, then a watercolor, <laughs> And finally, an oil painting. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, I, I hope I've been able to provide some motivation behind uh, the kind of particular cross-platform approach that MediaPipe Web has taken, and more importantly, share our excitement for the bright future of Web AI. So please check out the links scattered throughout this presentation or on our new website at goo.goal slash AI Edge in order to learn more and stay up to date with our latest announcements. Thank you. Mm -hmm.